Gookie, to another Cheers. successful video shoot. Another shop. successful video shoot. We do all right, don't we? We do. We, we make it in the end. Yeah. No, but you know, yeah. I think we've done all right. Yeah. I can't I mean, remember. How did we meet? It was... Whisk? whisk yeah. Because it was on the... Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was on the... Uh, we were shooting. What was it? What was it called? You Triggered. When I they know. Most of them are triggered in. Yeah. yeah. Was. was that the first time you met? Yeah, I'm pretty sure because uh, no. I'd seen your stuff before. No, before I feel then? like we've definitely. Yeah, no, no. We went to Western to shoot another video of Whisk. Was that? That was. Before? That was before. Yeah, that was definitely before. I didn't know you. We was on the beach. We got the sunset just in time. Do you remember? Mm. Um. Oh my goodness, I can't remember what, how the song goes, but we got it coming out, it's coming out. Yeah. I think that was the first time we met. And I then, that because was, I yeah. exchanged numbers, because I liked the way you work at the mm. time, but then, you know, me didn't contact, and then Triggered came, and it triggered me to contact you after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's just like a, like a word of mouth thing, isn't it? Mm. I mean, because I guess that's the best way for people to... I guess, like, when you know that one of your friends, like, works with someone, or, like, you know, someone in, yeah, you like, in the music the business, it's, yeah, when you, instead yeah. of just, like, something online. Yeah, you can, well, I go by feelings for me, for everything, I feel, feel, I just, I got that instinct, so I just kind of know good energy. Sometimes you could tell from behind the keyboard, do you know what I mean? You could just sense that these, this person seems all right, do you know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, yeah, I'm funny like that. So I've got that good energy when we were shot up in West Western. It was Western. Yeah. Yeah, with you. So yeah, I think it's important to to network. Yeah. But just know how you are with the certain intricate details that you may have for yourself. That's important to tap into with someone else to, so it works. Do you know what I mean? If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Yeah. You're humble. You're humble with it. You've got a dark sense of humour. <laughs> Definitely, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's for another it. episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about <laughs> what's in the cupboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, check out my other page for that. <laughs> <laughs> only, only Luke. <laughs> only, only Luke's. Only Luke's. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, oh, so yeah, I think that shoot just went well. Or the one we just done. The one we just done. I'm looking forward to seeing how you put that together. As usual, I always get excited when you sprinkle your magic or dust. Yeah. Over it. Yeah, I think it's quite cinematic, mm. like the way it's just you and the mic mm. and the smoke and the, the ambiance, you know. Yeah. And my facial expressions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. That, that That's important with uh, videos. It's something that uh, well, I think a lot of people struggle with, mm -hmm. like, at the beginning. And then... You, you could probably see us warm up, innit? Because I think maybe three takes in or four, you could see us started to... Because you do, you sit and you over you can overthink it. You go in natural. I go in not thinking necessarily, let's say like the plan's there. Yeah. I go in and I just do it. But then I realise... Maybe two takes in. I'm think overthink. I'm thinking of what I'm doing. Okay. Rather. And then as soon as I realise I'm thinking, I stop and then perf I don't perform. I just do it. Does that mm. make sense? Whereas the other ones, when you're thinking, you're performing. So yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. A process. Yeah, literally. Sometimes you just got to do it because I guess like when you think about it, like like you said, you just yeah, you overthink and you're doing something not being you. Yeah. And remember, it's you, and I've still kept it with me now. When you said to me. What will Crush do? Mm. And I was like, and that's when you, you see, so when they see the the artwork for it, yeah, that was me, that was Crush. The other one, when you was taking the shots, and yeah. I was just like, yeah. You know what I mean? And then I was like, what will Crush do? And then the end result is what you'll put out, I guess. And that was for the, that specific one, that was for the, the artwork for the promoting. That was for promoting the BS3 festival. Yeah. Yeah. That's that coming was the up promo. soon. That was the promo shots that you done. Go Luke. They're everywhere now. 
see everywhere. Mm. Billboards. You've I've seen it. it, yeah. You've made oh, it. My yeah. kids have seen it. I'm so proud of it. I had a feeling I'll make it to the billboards this year. I just had a feeling. Mm. I haven't done a great amount of work per se, obviously because of bump. Mm. And the pregnancy has been hard, really, really tough. Everything around it's been beautiful, but the actual pregnancy itself has been hard. So I haven't put in the amount of work I would have liked to, but somehow I knew I'd get to a billboard this year. Yeah. Which is really a blessing, you know. And yeah, you've helped me along the way as well, the journey. So yeah, anyway, BS3 is the 23rd of June. I'm excited. Mm, I'm nervous. I'm stressed. Stressing as well, obviously. I am heavily pregnant, baby's due any minute. And that leaves me with a short window to just get everything precise and on point and heal. Yeah. For the performance, you know? You know, you got the right attitude and the right mindset, you know. Mm. I'm sure everything's going to be all good. You know, what would be would be Maktub, what would be would be. But there are things that literally could affect the performance, you know, if, if God willing, everything goes fine with, with the delivery of my son. Um, and if not, if I, you know, it could be a C-section, it could be anything. And then that's going to put a halt on how the show's going to go. If I can even do it for sure, you know, yeah. but there's backup. I've got, got it all arranged in the background. If needs be, then we'd have to get a stool out. Do you know what I mean? Little things. Yeah. So yeah, either way it's going to, it's going to be fine. Yeah. And I'm excited. A lot of people are excited. I've got so much people like rooting rooting for, for me on this one. And a lot of people seem well deserved, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's been a long time. A long time. Yeah. I mean I personally I'm not too like when I was growing up I wasn't like too in, involved in the the scene, but like I can just tell like from the moment I met you, like your music is like some legendary stuff you know <laughs> like like you know like just the like the vibe like especially at like the saint paul's carnival mm. like oh, yeah. you know the crowd just uh, you could just feel like the crowd just connecting with you mm. like on a different level like you know not like you're just singing like random stuff partying whatever mm. like mm. i'm sure you've got songs like that anyway but mm. like <laughs> you know like like you know it's real stuff you know it's real stuff and I, I fail you on that. It's funny because a, a video came up on my phone the other day of us in St. Paul's Carnival. And I tend not to watch back certain performances. I don't know why. I just shy away from it. I just prefer to do it and get it done. Whereas other ones I see and I'll keep watching them. But um, I think what it is, especially with coming from, obviously, Bristol. I grew up, I was born in Bristol, but moved when I was young away to London. Mm. And then returned back. But I was always in between. This is where my family is. This is where I, this is Bristol's home. So I think people connect with me a lot as well because they know me. I'm a normal girl from around the way. I was naughty when I was young, not too bad, Brooke, you know what I mean? But I was I was around. Everyone knows me and I've always had the same... I've always been how I am. Mm. Probably was a bit rude and cheek, cheeky and bad mind when I was younger. But that's... Well, we all go through that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's another podcast. A whole <laughs> yeah. another podcast. <clears throat> it should be good it would us. But I think from all ages, obviously, and different area codes even, or whatever, I can go and put myself anywhere yeah. and give love and reciprocate it back as well. And I think that transpires with my energy just as a person. You yeah. know what I, mean? I think people feel that. So I think that's why the audience can connect with me a lot, a lot more as well. I'll just keep it real. I'm just cool. You know what I mean? I don't try and make out someone I'm not. I'm just how I am. If you know me, you know. And if you don't, you're gonna you probably look at me and be like, oh, she looks like she thinks she's nice or feisty, mm. but you don't know me, you know? Yeah. So, but my music is funny because I haven't put a lot of music out. Yeah. I haven't. I've got so much, but I've kept it close to my chest. And then obviously Walks of Life has altered the music I've made at that time. They've always seemed to have been something that's made me change direction on my music. So I've never... Oh, I'm not in, yeah, so I'm not in that space to think, oh my God, listen to those lyrics. You're not hearing me sit and spit that. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm in, in a, I've elevated to somewhere else. Yeah. So a lot of it gets put into the back burner. And then also I didn't have, at one point, I lost interest in the music and just got on with real life. So then a lot of it was just sat there again. Yeah. Then the social media 
world came and I just didn't I had to adapt to it as well mm. and then it's like crabs in a bucket everyone we're put, I'm put, put in some real work back in the day you know and then you've got people that can know how to make a art make artwork now put it on Spotify and then they just make your numbers so then it became more of a challenge to have to catch up keep up with that and I feel like a lot of my stuff's real organic real timeless music hmm. and my story so then I w would held back a bit more from putting things out so there's always been something going on basically but I've always been performing or I've always performed my stuff but not physically put it out yeah so there's not a lot there's loads of features but my own projects I've never put out an album and I haven't put out EPs I've got EP Crush Landing was actually my first titled name for my EP it was the first one I was going to put out but the name stuck with me as my artist name as well. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Opposed to just Crush. So now I think I can say that this BS3 festival is finally me landing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because on a bigger scale, you know, for them to even ask me to do it, I'm so, I'm so honoured. And it's like, in one respect, yeah, I deserve it. It's been a long time coming, do you know what I mean? And mm. I do fit the bill for it. I think I would, I would, I would do Bristol proud. Yeah. You know? And also it's, the, the starting of a new space for me as well. Like my price has gone up. My, the audience is now shifted to more household names as well. Do you know what I mean? And household mm. names and stuff like that. So this is like the official crush landing. The story, my story has taken me to this moment. That's how I, what I believe and what, that's what I feel. Yeah. You know, it's been a long road. No, definitely. I mean, Yes, I mean, I saw, like, when it got announced, obviously, I sort of knew just a little bit before, mm. but then I saw when it actually got announced, like, officially, like, the amount of people, mm. like, who were congratulating you and, mm. you know, like, saying, yeah, we need to support, and, like, you know, like, yeah, it's great to see. So, I guess, like, as a whole, Bristol is still kind of trying to keep, cap, play, you catch know, up. catch up with mm -hmm. the rest of the music scene mm -hmm. um which is interesting because you know there's always been talent here absolutely um so much but yeah i mean i don't know what it is that keeps us limited to this to a, such a bracket to such a place there really is some real talent all walks as well yeah. such a different diverse range of people you know but then our town is big for obviously you've got the drum and bass side there is well-known people yeah even though we named the, the normal ones we were all very aware of you know there are still people doing successful with uh, keeping things afloat hmm. but you've got to know to know yeah you know it'll be a part of it but there are we are playing catch up and i think this is to have such a big festival well, it's not even a festival it's more like a concert isn't it you know, they call it a festival, but it's more like a concert. With They haven't had big names like this in one space as a concert in Bristol. So it puts Bristol on the map. It's going to help um, economically. Yeah. I mean, and stuff mm. like that. And, um, yeah, help to just put some of the artists on on the map officially now. You know? And, um, yeah, I have the, the pleasure <laughs> and the stress <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> while I'm heavily pregnant. To, to be the one to be the only female from Bristol representing. Yeah. So when when did they... How What was the process of you being asked to do the... Do the beer. Do yeah, the do the do I the actually event. received an email from somebody in the team. And uh, they asked me if I'm interested. They've, they've been... Somebody suggested me. They've looked up my stuff. And that was from Boomtown. Yeah. When I done Boomtown twenty twenty two, we opened up the new vault stage with the band, the Embassy, and with Wish, Wishmaster and the Embassy and myself. And from then, whoever it was liked my stuff and whatever and passed it on to them. So they suggested me and um they looked it up and they thought, Yep, yeah, that's the one. So that basically that's how they emailed me about it. Mm. Um, I took a couple of days to sit on it no, first of all bs3 okay could just be a normal festival that's fine give me send me some more information so she sent me the information and i was like hmm 
oh, okay, in the middle of Craig David and Damage. Yeah. <laughs> they, sure, they don't mean Crush, DJ Crush. Yeah. Wait, like, I don't, are you sure? But then I'm thinking, I'm panicking, thinking, oh, my God, when's the date? Oh, my God, the baby's due. What am I going to do? So I sat on it for a minute. I had to be real, really, really think to myself and just lay, lay out a, a good few things. Is it possible? Can I? Yes, I can. Do you know what I mean? And furthermore, it's a big opportunity. You have to say yes, regardless. The money's good. Mm. Do you know what I mean? All of that stuff. So it was like, yeah, this is your time to actually do show and be living proof, walking proof of the hustle that goes behind the scenes, the real, the reality of being pregnant, being a mum, you know what I mean? In the middle of moving, you know, all these other real life situations that are going on and trying to fulfil your dream as well, or you know what I mean? Or your job or what you enjoy doing. So yeah. that's what ultimately I felt when I emailed them back. It was like, yeah, I'll take it, I'll do it. And ever since, it's, that's exactly what it's been. There's been real life things happening where it slowed me down. Other days I've got energy and I'm right, this is what we're doing. I've got a good team put behind me now. Um, whereas before, many years ago, I was working with Adrian Stone and uh, and I had a team, small team, but we got stuff done. You know what I mean? He was very busy and active within London and Bristol and it helped to open up a lot of doors. Do you know what I mean? Obviously in the social media world, you're doing your own artwork, you're uploading, you're constantly having to do to keep up with the social media platforms yeah and there came a point i just stopped i was done with it i've done loads of shows i've just moved back to bristol obviously so i've done loads of shows and i just took a break then i got pregnant and it was like perfect because i'm over it at, the moment, at this point you know so then now this has happened i've got back put together from networking from people who believe in me it's not just all about money mm. it's people who see a vision and want to share this journey with me as well. You know what I mean? People I, I got love for and are happy to use some of their skills. Like you're one of them as well in terms of, you know, you're doing your behind the scenes doing the video and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so we've got a good team now finally where I can dump off to my PA. My PA then can finally, she coordinates it and takes it out from my head and processes it properly. So yeah, everyone's in the background doing what they can to make it happen, which is much better because now I can focus on getting these f songs finished, concentrating on the show, what I'm going to wear, looking pretty, you know, baby, mm. making sure we're cool, my, you know, my household first and foremost. So, yeah, it's taking off the pressure off of that as well. But, um, yeah, the 360 basically is we are finally put together now, you know what I mean, as a team, which is really, really nice to know because it's not just about the BS3 show, it's about moving forward. It's about what comes after that. You know, we've got to capitalise off of it. We've got to bring in who we can. Yeah. And um, different brands and so forth. It's a lot to kind of process in a short space of time. What's over, what's over there, Luke? No, I just keep looking at uh, <laughs> the screen, just making sure it's still filming. <laughs> that's, that's the, you know, that like... I'm I'm seeing all these... I'm just hearing all these gems, and I'm like, it's definitely recording, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so yeah, real struggles. Look, even trying to sit up at the moment. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I couldn't. I, I, there's no way me as a man can imagine what you're going through, and it's the fact that you're doing this show as well, like that's that is very inspirational. I think. Thank you. Like, I can definitely imagine this being something that like people talk about, mm. like you know, years down the line, even like you know, like. Yeah, for all the good reasons. Let's yeah. hope. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people were like, when are you having the baby? What if you have the baby on stage? I'm like, no, 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 don't panic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a good selling point. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the baby's going to come before that, way before. So, yeah, no, it is. It's Even I have to, like, stop sometimes and feel like it's a, it's, it's a lot of pressure. Mm. And I have so much other things going on as well. Can I... Can I? And then I'm like, of course, God only gives you what you can manage. And I was like, God, just, whoa, yeah. <laughs> slow down just a second, just <laughs> one minute, please. Yeah. But he can, He's in, and it's a blessing. It's come at the right time, and this is my this is my time to just, to, to rise up. You know what I mean? And yeah, and that's, that's what we're going to do, Luke. 
That's what we're, we're going to do. Get the best footage. We've got obviously we're documenting a lot of it as well, so people will see leading up to it and then after all the things behind the scenes, what really happens, what it looks like. It's not all glitz and glam. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I've been suffering severe morning sickness. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot. There's just loads. So it's, it's going to be interesting. And I'm trying to keep it fun and just organically real as possible. Yeah, because people, that's what people are going to resonate with, mm. like the realness. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. And it's not that I'm personal. It's just that I've had my time of social media in one respect like yeah especially it's uh, i think my my what's it called what's it called again mm. Sat, oh my god snapchat i've got baby brain my snapchat was i had a little thing at one point it was working you know my mum when when she was alive i'd always scare her so that became a thing that people would always watch my son he can sing and, and liked liked dj so you know he was i was nurturing that a bit more as well and then my older son he hates being on camera so i'd always try and capture him but yeah. that life and then me talking was working for a long time so i was documenting a lot of stuff on there mm. but then again it came to a halt and to find it get back in the swing i found difficult so it's like i don't mind i'm an open book you could talk to me about anything i'll speak to you do you know what i mean if i feel to but i don't i'm not so much private i'm just at that space where I don't know what to, how what to give the audience in terms of make of them connecting yeah. with me. Do you know what I mean? So this is what I'm experiencing now. Where I'm just documenting everything so they can just see the real the reality. I'm not trying to fabricate it or sit and press record and then I mean, have something rehearsed. I just want to naturally let it flow. So I think that's the best way for people to resonate with me. Yeah, definitely. Mm, you know what I mean. Yeah, that is definitely what the best way. Yeah, that's where we're at at the moment. So, how many po how many have you um how many podcasts have you um episodes have you done? Because uh, remember, you've got to make it past five. Yeah. To keep it okay, yeah, successful. Yeah. Ninety percent <laughs> apparently apparently only ten percent of podcasts make it past. Uh, 10 episodes or 10 something episodes. like that I, I, it's something it's, less than that. it's something like that I, I can't quite remember um, but yeah I think I'm not sure what number this one is as in like what order this will come out in but I know this is like I think the sixth one mm -hmm. and I've as of right now n none of them have been, been released, released yet. yet how are um, you finding it are you like are you watching your your progress along the way you're finding little things different and how to set the cameras and conversation yeah i mean the cameras like i pretty much got that down down to a t the audio is kind of something that i'm still trying to get a little bit better just realizing that you know being a bit closer makes makes it, makes it louder and stuff like that uh, but i think the main thing the main learning thing has been trying to talk to people because uh like i've always i've always loved talking to a camera that's something i used to do when i was when i was a teenager yeah yeah like i used to do like gaming videos yeah, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. Uh, what else did i do have you ever heard of the chubby bu chubby bunny challenge no it's, it, it sounds a bit mad it's basically you just put marshmallows in your mouth oh and then try and talk and all yeah, that yeah okay, like, yeah like i used yeah. to do like weird stuff like that as well like me and a couple of mates yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, and then I stopped doing that, got more into music videos. So I think this is kind of like... So you found, you started finding your... Yeah, I guess quite, quite like what, what, you, what you were saying, like getting back into music yeah. and stuff like that. Because like, I've realised that, you know, when I did the radio interview with Crazy, like, I got so many messages of people saying, oh, I love that, like, you yeah. know, hearing your side of things. And, you know, I wanted to do that more, but like on a regular thing and like get people involved like hear people's stories you know yeah that's like me my thing's no, not music's not the be all and end all you know i love presenting i'm due to do a bit of what's the word volunteering okay <laughs> <laughs> excuse me volunteering with eugema actually so mm. i can get i'm um, used to kind of get familiar with the setup and everything like that as yeah i would like to have djs where i started do you know what I mean? Mm. So I'd like to try and do something where I'm presenting and talking about stuff as well. Just finding the right... We'd have to be probably 
after hours though because I want to be able to be myself I'm, I'm not got the foulest mouth but just no filter where I can talk about certain things and yeah you know what I mean so yeah that's that's presenting is what I'm into definitely and like voiceovers and things like that you know what I mean mm. music for me it's up there it'll always be there and like I said even now I've slowed down on it it's come back and I have to follow it through now and every quarter. Yeah. I, I got no choice. It's like just come, Chris, Lena, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? But when you say you've got no choice, is that like, is that you putting pressure on yourself, or is it like more a case of like you're excited to? No, it's exciting. It, yeah. What I mean by that is, it's called. It's called. It's the calling. It's evident that you know the powers that maybe. Uh, giving me this this is what I've got to do this is kind of the, the it's bigger than me yeah do you know what I mean I can feel it so it's like I, and I've got a good story I think a lot of people can resonate with me as a female and the journey we've had to go through from love addiction heartbreak do you know what I mean um, motherhood mm. death do you know there's a lot of things and the thing is I still am the same it either makes or breaks you, really and truthfully, you know. And I haven't really had a chance to express for t two people mm. or through my music, you know, part of that journey. And I know when I used to, one of my favourite artists, Mary J. Blige, Keisha Cole, Keisha and Mary, when they're in pain, they put their best music out, you know. And that's what I grew up off of listening to and it helped me through. And somehow that's kind of, I know that that's, the same thing with me, you know what I mean? If I sing and talk about these things, which I have done in a few tracks, it really makes the difference, you know? People understand and, and can... I feel like I can heal people from it now. That's kind of like a bit more, more of my calling. I, I, know, I know it. I'm not quite ready to do, like, life coach. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still life coaching myself, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, I guess and I would go on a tangent. Ends. I talk about one thing and end up on ten different conversations mm. and forget about what I was trying to say in the first place. <laughs> that's yeah. a trait of uh, that's a trait of ADHD, right? Yeah, probably got it all me. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, I've been diagnosed. Got... Okay, but um, I would I drunk a lot. I was always a drinker, so I think that when I try to get diagnosed with uh, bipolar, for instance, okay. The doctors are like, try stop drinking for us. It can't just be <laughs> yeah. that, you know what I mean? So, um, and now I haven't, I haven't, I don't drink anymore. Not just because of the baby, but shit I've gone through. Do you know what I mean? So that has helped to absolutely, um, I'm the purest I've been. Do you know what I mean? So I can see and feel more clearly what issues I may have to mm. work on or, you know, understand. I can understand myself a lot more now with taking away the alcohol. You know, but I do think ADHD is, I'm understanding more what ADHD, what it entails, you know yeah. what I mean? And I'm looking at the traits, I'm like, yeah, you know, there's some, there's something going on there. Repetitive. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I've got autism, so I'm quite like, I, I'm quite in tune with the, yeah. how it works. And not only that, but also I, I mentioned this when I did my radio interview, but I mean, I do genuinely think 90% of the people I film for have got some sort of ADHD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, obviously, I don't, I'm not one of these people that believes that literally everyone's got it because it's not realistic. And I know some people are like, oh, everyone's a little bit autistic. Like, you know, some people say that, but it's not true. Like, but I think with music and with creative, 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 creative stuff, stuff, like, it does seem like that is, There's a treat. yeah, the yeah. common. Mm -hmm. the nominator yeah yeah very true yeah I, I see it as well and you know yeah it, it's there when you look at you just pick five people and you know they can call us crazy you see us procrastinate we've usually got some big story or something going on you know what i mean mm. the backwards and the forwards we're usually very nice people as well but have a dark cloud for some reason as well that kind of hangs over us but the procrastination is one of the biggest ones. They, what do they call it as well? Uh, what's it called? The. Oh my goodness. See, look, this is what happens as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is baby brain. <laughs> Syndrome, when you 
you know what you're about, but you question everything. There's a particular word for it. Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, I read it. I read some things That's about that. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. There's a lot of that going on. So is that is that a trait of ADHD? Is it? Or I don't know if it's a trait of ADHD, but it's definitely something I've battled with. I think it's a creative thing. Creative thing. Because I know a lot of, like, obviously, because I'm a cameraman, like, you know, I get all these things recommended to me like there's a lot of like reels and like posts saying like a lot of cameramen have imposter syndrome because they feel like they don't you know like when you're running a business you know you think like oh yeah no nah, it's just i don't think i'll be successful yeah, like yeah, it's just yeah. a hobby you know yeah yeah you try and keep it in the hobby side i've done yeah. it when i remember when i first started my first business it was called cc's online closet and it came from from me trying to lose weight mm. and I'm a Scorpio, so I'm very sexually, you know, sexual. So I had a little magic box of outfits and toys and stuff like that. So, okay. And then there was the waist trainers that no one knew about at the time. They were quite new. So it was CC's online closet. And I've put it all together, done everything. It was wicked. But when it came to selling, I was nervous because... It's like, oh, I just do it to a couple of friends. They always ask me where I get my little outfits from or this, that and the third anyway, you know. So, but then to cross over and really try and see it as a business. No, 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 we're not doing that. Mm. It's just no part time. It's just doing it for fun. And no, so you do, you get scared of the failure, don't you? Same thing with the graphics. I learned to do graphics myself. And then I started graphics, graphic plugs within lockdown. Mm. And I've done a lot of the t-shirts, um, there's a t-shirt of Flames who passed away who, who, in Bristol. Mm. He was he was murdered. And I've done, um, designed like a picture of him with green and wings and stuff like that. Oh, just okay. as a nice, you know, like a, just a... Oh, a you've nice, done that? And I've done that. Oh, wow, because I've seen that everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. And for me, it wasn't about putting my name on it. No. It was just for the cause, you know what I mean, for him. But it's gone everywhere. So people wanted to know as well who it is. And I just didn't say nothing because I'm like, mm. I don't want to, don't ask me to do no work for you because I can't do it. I just do it when I can do it. But I'm actually quite good at it. Yeah. But I won't turn it into a biz full-time business because I start to panic. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I totally understand with that. Well, I guess there's also a case of like jack of all trades kind of thing. Like, because mm. you... So you're an amazing singer and, you know, how many other things would you say that you're, like, into as well? <laughs> what I'll say is I thought when I was growing up, having my fingers in many pies, I mm. thought, was the way forward. Yeah. So I liked doing everything. If I can, I'll do it. And if I can just do it and I know I've done it, I am onto something else. Do you know what I mean? And then obviously... <laughs> The actual key is to master your art yeah. <laughs> in one field, you know what I mean, at least. So, yeah, I can do many things, but then that's where the success doesn't come because you don't follow, you're not following it right all the way through. Yeah. You know, we can just, you just touch on it. I mean, it worked, it's worked. It's worked well. I've done a lot of, loads of stuff. I've done, you know, some people live on the same street all their life. That's just what they do. That's, they don't travel. they got a car, they might just go to Cardiff. And yeah. back. They don't really. They're not doing. I've done so much. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's helped. It's helped me. But at the same time, yeah, I think mastering your art is the the key in it. Yeah. And then you can flourish. But then if you don't know what you want to do, you're gonna keep trying different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess if you figure out early on, like what your main kind of thing is, mm. then, like, see, like for me, for example. Like, I started off doing music and YouTube videos, and that meant I had to learn how to film myself. Mm -hmm. And then I found out I was actually quite good at filming. And then as soon as people were interested in that, I pretty much just stuck to that. But I still make music every now and again. Um, but most of my energy is on the filming. Mm. And now I've got the studio. My thought process in that was, well... Yeah, it's something different, but it's still related to it's still filming. It all tallies up. Yeah. It? You know what I mean? And also it's about giving back as well. So when I went off of the music, I didn't want to be in, and I say that, what I mean is I didn't want to be the one in, in the front 
trying to be the singer or trying to be the rapper. I start. I set up my studio, and was given back, mm. and that I I loved it. I loved bringing different artists in and recording them, showing them how to record themselves, and just seeing them go away with a little something. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I love giving back. So I was still doing it. It just wasn't about me anymore. So that's and that's what you're doing. You know mm. what I mean? You're still tallies in, but you're also giving so much back with with your skills. And that's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's quite like it's not just like a like a you know a nice thing to do, but it's also like it just makes sense for your mental state. Like it's not good to be like oh look at me all the time. Like. I mean, some people might enjoy that, some but people love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I go into character, you know, because you yeah. can see what I'm like. I'm not, I'm not like that, but I do like to play. I like to be the deep and play up sometimes, but yeah. that's more for playing up. But no, it's not about being that. Mm. Got to be humble. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, would you say, in a way, is Crush like a character, or is that, you know, like only like a... only saying that because you. You know, like, see, like, see some people make music, and I heard it before, actually. All right, let, let me rephrase that. So I had someone do a photo shoot recently, and they were struggling quite a lot with doing, like, facial expressions and things like that. And then they said that the best way they could find was when they went on Halloween, and they had, like, they dressed up, and they were like, right, I'm this character. Yeah, masked. Yeah, and then yeah. you go into character. Because it's like what we said earlier, like what would Crush do, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, it is, because first and foremost, I am Selena. Yeah. I am Cece. I'm, I'm mummy. You know what I mean? I'm mum. I'm, I'm babe. I am, you know, I have another life at home. My kids know my songs, and I can't listen to all of them, but yeah. they know me as mummy. They know I do music. They know I've been on TV. They know I've like now they mum has got to go and go and do an interview, you know, and stuff like that. So they're very aware, but it's not what it is when it's outside of that. It's mummy. It, I am that, you know. What I mean, I don't walk around being crushed and just spitting bars. In, yeah, you know what I mean, and just dressed up and yeah, you know, being at <laughs> yeah. home and all of that. So it is. There is a real side to me, and I love it because you know that's I get to step out of that. Mm. And then there's a massive element crush is, is exactly me, you know what yeah. I mean? But then there's the performing side and then there's the side when I don't even want to have to go and do something and I have to switch on and smile. Yeah. You know, I'm in town the other day with my partner and some girl came up to me, some woman. She said, Oh my god, crush and I was like, Yeah. <laughs> she was I was like and he looked at me and I looked and I was like, hello, darling. Like, and straight away, I'm like, I'm struck. I'm like, what the fuck do I do? You know yeah. what I mean? And she's like, BS free. Oh my God, congratulations. And then I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. And I was like, do I know her? Yeah. Do I know her from somewhere? Did I, do I not? If not, this is what I've just got to go through right now. And obviously I was so grateful. And I'm just trying to get on with my shopping. I look like shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have no eyelashes on. I just wanted to get dip in, dip out. But she recognised me and it was just like, wow. So then I have to, the person I am as well, I'm loving, I'm cool, you know what I mean? So I asked her a name, gave her a hug and stuff and thanked her, do you know what I mean? Mm. And then that was that. So, yeah, you've got to still, stepping away from Selena, there's times you've got to switch on. Mm. Sometimes, like, I've been in dark places and I don't want to even face the world and I have to come and show up and got to show up, you've got to represent, you know what I mean? I'm not the type of person that, cr yeah, crush doesn't represent bad. I don't know what people, people's perception is. Maybe you can tell me what you think of me and the word crush. Because I thought when I started thinking of wordplay and stuff like that at one point, I'm like, crush is a negative word. It's like you crush things, isn't it? It's like crushed ice, crushed, crushed, crushed. But then it's like. Do you know what? When I first thought of, when I first saw your name, like crush, I thought it was like crush as in like when you get a crush on someone. Yeah, yeah, see, that's automatically what... Is that what it that's was? What, no, no, no. It was actually Crash originally. <laughs> My name was Crash. Yeah. Crash Bandicoot, they used to call me because I used to come and mash up the set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For God's sake. And 
Care Bear because I have a cute face and I wanted to be sexy back then, but they was like, you're cute. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> so, and then when I started working with my manager, uh, my producer at the time, mm. Adrian, big up Adrian at Bad Breed, he thought it was crush. So it just stuck. I just can't be bothered to like, <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah. and then it worked because he's, his name is Stone. So okay. it was crush them, stone them. Do you know what I mean? It just kind of worked. And then as we started working with artists and in the industry, it just made sense and it, it stuck with me, basically. Hmm. But going back to my point, which I think I can't remember. <laughs> 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 which was, yes. Yeah, yeah, I am Selena. Yeah. And there's a lot of things before Crush, but there are elements where you have to show up as Crush and, you know, give it what it is. It's, yeah. not, it's not a massive or an ego. There's not, a, you know, because it can be really major shift in it from the person you are to, yeah. you know. No, definitely. I've, I've met some people who, especially like some like drill rappers with masks, like I meet and when they Sorry. take the mask off, it's, they're like, what the fuck? completely different person you must see a lot yeah that's another it'd be good to like hear a lot of your stories and things because you film a lot and you can probably probably so many stories and mm. funny shit and wild stuff and yeah also scary as well because you do film a lot of draw people you, things might pop off yeah you know what i mean you've got equipment and stuff like that you've got to protect yourself you i'm know? never scared of that because i i honest they are like honest to god 99 of them are good people and i'm there to film their music video like Mm. i always do a deposit anyway so it's not like i'm not turning up with all like thousands of pounds of equipment and not even add any of the money Mm, up mm, front mm, like you mm. know yeah yeah yeah. it's just not realistic and Um, you've got your thing on you if you need to in it as well (laughs) Well, you know, I got these. <laughs> Not that I would. That's for another one. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we know there must be a lot of drunk experiences. Well, I mean, they yeah. must come in normal. Mm. They turn up, smoke some, you know what I mean? Whatever they're smoking on now. So loud. Yeah. I don't know. I've, got, I've lost touch with all of that. If I take two pulls of a spliff, like it, I first smoked, I'd have the giggles. You don't smoke, do you? No. If I took two pulls, I'd turn into a whole different person now. Yeah. So I'd stay away from it. Yeah, that's the same. I, I don't really I don't really get on with it, get too paranoid. Paro, yeah. I don't know how I used to do it when I look back. I used to smoke um, and drink and then we'd be out. And when I look back now, I can remember being feeling paro. I want to go. I don't mm. want to be in this space. Now I'm understanding more it's about your energy yeah. and your intuition telling you you don't want to be you shouldn't be if you've got to think too long about something you, you the answer's no mm. you know what i mean like being in spaces and stuff like that but yeah it does make you paro and it's just laced with a lot of shit at one point you know there was a point when i was on the growing thing and that shit was being sprayed with silicone and all sorts just to make it heavy and we were doing all sorts yeah you know and um just look at a lot of people now we ain't what it used to be it's horrible. Well, I guess, like, I, I'm not too knowledgeable about it, but, like, I'm guessing, obviously, UK stuff is not, like, naturally grown, is it? Mm. Like, you know, people yeah, always talk know. about Cali and yeah, it's all, that yeah, kind it's of all, stuff. Like, it's cause, really homegrown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've always thought, like, you know, like, if you're having a, say, like, you have a cheeseburger from McDonald's, like, you know, that's obviously a lot of processed stuff going on but then if you got like a homemade one from the farm yeah it's really from like from calf yeah you get as close to it as possible yeah you know and when i think back to when i was growing up i grew up around a lot of rasters my dad's mm. a rest you know proper weed bush weed and everyone was more righteous and just relaxed on it and in comparison to now mm. They're monged out. Yeah. They're just, I don't know, man. It's sad. But yeah, stay away from the weed. 
So yeah, you must see a lot of all the, the, the shift in people as well and then how para they can be on, on set and stuff like that. And... Yeah, I mean, it's not even a paranoid thing necessarily. It's just like sometimes it's like I'm there, I'm set up, and then it's like, right, were you ready to film? No. No, I got to Let me it. just... Let me just bill it. Yeah. It's annoying. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I might as well film you billing <laughs> it then. <laughs> And it's like, yeah. Time yeah, like like th things would get done a lot quicker, you know, if there wasn't that there. But at the same time, I don't know what's going through their mind. Like, I think when you start when you start smoking, like you know, it's like any addiction, isn't it? Well, okay, like obviously, not... sometimes sometimes it is a case Ooh. where. Sorry, he's <laughs> kicking out. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's, no, it's all you good. Say sometimes there's a case where um well i guess you get medical stuff as well like sometimes it helps with that i know some people said it helps with autism um it personally that never really was the case for me <laughs> <laughs> i just sort of like was like turned out a lot worse if i smoked but yes it, it medicates it does what it needs to do i just think in just find the balance with it's like everything else do it in balance and I'm just seeing a lot of my, my, my people, my friends and and stuff it just they're not um meditating on it. Mm. It's just like you said, any other any other addiction, it's habit. Yeah. It's the morning, it's after food, it's straight, it's I need to get that, you know. But look, I can't I'm not judging it. Each to their own. I just wish some people would just find Maybe do it a couple of times a week on a meditating thing and then they'll be able to open up a bit more. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Opposed to feeling so suppressed on it. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's like it's easy to look on an outside perspective. Mm. But like, I know, I know like everyone can be addicted to stuff. I mean, you know, I could be addicted to chocolate, you know. It's like, yeah, I need a chocolate yeah, bar yeah, each morning. You know, like, yeah, there's no limit to what it yeah. can be, what the addiction is, isn't it? Yeah. You know? I think I I I had a heart attack in August and that has been a mate well I say it was a heart spasm that went into a heart attack. Mm. And that's due to that's drinking drugs that is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's a lot of the stuff I still need to touch on with people and let them understand, you know, through a lot of darkness you can find yourself trapped in these situations and that's what happened from the death of my mum, my brother, so many, so many things, you know what I mean? I found myself um, medicating on drinking drugs mm. and to the point it gave me a heart spasm which led to the heart attack and <clears throat> I went somewhere that I've never been in my life. I felt like I passed away and I came back somehow, I don't know, I don't know if my mum was like, what's she doing here on the other side? No, she can't go back. She's not she's not ready to come over here yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um I came back and after that it has stuck with me ever since, like what happened and why did I why was I blessed with another chance? You know what I mean? And then from then all I can think is I still have purpose. Like I, I have to fight harder so it actually prevented me i've been lucky enough to go through such that ex the experience was crazy i really it was one of the most scariest things and i've been through some shit in my life that was one of the most scariest things i've ever experienced in my life and to come out of it i've had no choice to not no drink and drugs do you mm. know what i mean so i've been blessed with it as well if i hadn't have gone through that i understand the battles of addiction yeah. And battling off and, off and on, off and on. You know what I mean? I've had the opportunity to not drink. But have I? No. Do you understand? So this has prevented it. It's been a blessing mm. in disguise. You know, so I do totally feel it for a lot of people that haven't got the resilience or the tools or the mindset, anything to stop. Do you know what I mean? And I get it. My heart bleeds for a lot of people. You know, but I've been I've been blessed with that one bad situation to actually stop me mm. from stuff, you know what I mean? And that is where I, where I'm at with things. So I would like I don't I don't know what it means. I know that 
people that know what's happened to me have taken a little leaf and were so scared that I was that I nearly went that they have stopped their selves as well now. So it's already been a blessing that's passed on as well. People mm. have taken their, their health a bit more serious and had taken a little look at their life a bit more serious, you know. So it's had a domino effect, which is good. I think I need to talk about these things a bit more. And hopefully I can inspire other people to just yeah. slow down. You know, I can't judge. I know where I come from. I know what my, you know, it's not about that. It just hurts. And I wish some people had something that they can hold on to that's made them have to stop. Is it easier? I don't, I couldn't have done it otherwise. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I guess everyone, everyone's got to go on their own journey. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, I did used to smoke. But then the thing that stopped me was I sort of did, did did it one time and I sort of just like greened out. I think that's what it's called. I think it was a situation where I was smoking, but I didn't have any tobacco in it because oh, I'd, always, I'd always cough. And yeah, like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. also I'm thinking like smoking tobacco without a filter, surely that's bad as well. But then it was like I was smoking and then it was like I couldn't do anything. I was like zoned out just staring at the floor like a heavy would be like is he all right is he all right i'm just like that and then someone like pass <laughs> someone passes me a drink like this and you're still just like and i'm like you're in another dimension <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i'm like i had some water and then i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> What it's like. I couldn't even go home that day. I was, of course sorry, not. Sorry, Mum, if you're watching this. <laughs> He's right now. <laughs> at least, at least I did the right thing after that. <laughs> you know, so, you have the rest. Some people would be like, "Oh, oh, that was." Let's yeah. go again. Oh no, nah, <laughs> that was not the case. Like I thought, I was. I mean, apparently my skin just went white. I know I'm white anyway, but even whiter. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you had that bad experience, and that's prevented good. Yeah. My younger son, my two sons are so good, um, and they're not, they know what goes on, but they're not really about it, but my, my oldest, he's 17 now, mm. but he kept asking about um, cookies and stuff like that, and you know what I mean, he wanted to try one, he never smoked spliff, which I believe to be true, and uh, my fucking older cousin, well, younger, my younger cousin, sorry, but older than him, mm. makes the cookies and all that kind of stuff. And gave him. You don't mean these kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those with, with greenery. Yeah. And yeah, not these cookies that I give him. You know what I mean? <laughs> at home. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and gave oh, him a fucking half, half a cookie. Yeah. Now, people that smoke weed don't even touch, don't even touch edibles or anything like that a lot of people don't you know what i mean it's a very different high mm. and the poor boy had half he didn't even break him off a little bit i was so angry but that's another story but he experienced that and <laughs> i can laugh now but at the time it wasn't funny and he's going he's in his room and i just hear him go mommy 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 <laughs> so obviously i'm miss panicky anyway my baby i'm running what's wrong baby and he's like I can't hear nothing. I can't hear mommy. I can't hear nothing. I'm like, what do you mean you can't hear? Oh my God, where's the phone? I go, call the ambulance. What's going on? You're panicking and shit like that. I was like, what's wrong? What's happened? He's like, I don't know. I don't know, mom. I don't know. And then he said, I said, what? He, he, no, I didn't think I asked him if he took anything. He said, gave me yeah. a, a cookie. I said, what? <laughs> You're fucking high. I slapped him up. You're high. Look at you. But at the same time, while I was so angry, it was so scary still because he was still going through it. Yeah. I couldn't believe my baby was high. So then it's. How old was he at the time? 16. Yeah. At the time. So he started hallucinating and then he started giggling. Just going. <laughs> yeah. So I had to just walk him through the whole steps and be like, baby, you got to remember you're high. Okay. You. That's what's happening to you right now. Mm. But he went to some next dimension. He said he can see. Obviously, I meditate and stuff like that. I got you know crystals, Buddha and stuff like that. He's like I can see that thing that you got in your room, Mum. <laughs> you know I mean, he's on about Buddha. You know what I mean? He said, but it was you. He was like this, <laughs> like, I mean? and I think it was God and all sorts. This is after he's told me about all this, but yeah, that was he won't touch. 
yeah anything now good you know and obviously if i had my way i would have personally have had i would have done it with him broke him off a little bit rather than him do it out on road you know stuff like that i would have broken off a little bit just to get the feeling so he's got it off of his head and he understands what it feels like but he had half which has totally ruined his whole experience he never wants to touch it again mm. you know what i mean and um, there you go yeah well i guess it depends like would you say so if you've done it that way as in like a little bit do you think he would have been more likely to then tr want to try it again so this is why macked up everything for a reason regardless mm. of how extreme or you don't understand or how hurtful it is or painful whatever it is it all makes sense yeah so in the long run yes if i done it in a safe environment with me like that you know or you know controlled more in controlled environment he might have liked it i would it was hope with the hope he doesn't you yeah. know what i mean but i would never have thought to give him i wouldn't have I would only give my baby a little thing just to take, just so he's experienced it and shut him up. But it was the extreme. So yeah. in actual fact, it worked out better because I know he never wants to feel like that. But having said that, he might, again, you know, down the line, he might try it again. He might. Yeah, I might forget. <laughs> forget. <laughs> what happened? We've all been there. I've <laughs> yeah. done things that, you know, you forget and then you do it straight away. You don't learn from the lesson, whatever it is, first time. And then you go back in for the kill. Not, then you make or break. Yeah, that's what happened with him in the weed. Yeah. I guess there's a lot of life lessons to be learned. Because that can apply to, to anything, really. Mm. Even like, well, just well, anything, really. Anything. Any Too much of anything is... That's it. Everything's got to be in balance. It's like one of the hardest things to, to do is find the balance yeah. of stuff. But as you evolve... As you go through stuff, you really do realise we're, we're grown, innit? Yeah. We know what to say, we know what not to say, we know what to be, should be doing to what we really shouldn't be fucking doing, let's face it, innit? So it's like, if you can just find that balance, you got to admit to yourself the absolute cunt you are and the beautiful person you are. You've got to find your, your balance with it and work with a moral compass. Mm. I could have sh shaked my ass and sold myself years ago if i really wanted to be famous if i put up been in so many rooms and stuff i could have done anything to have got there but it's not that deep and i'm so glad i've stuck to it's taken me all this time just to get on a, a main stage mm. that i should have been on years ago but if i fucked my way through that i would have been on it by now but then it w i wouldn't be me so i'm just you have to stick to your have some form of moral compass surrounding the balance yeah you know what i mean i mean Seriously. i guess i guess doing it your way yeah it might have taken longer but hopefully and i'm i'm sure you will last longer you know doing that like you know just having sex with someone like it happens just to, just to but it never lasts the career <laughs> never really lasts it is, though. yeah whatever it is and you're taking yourself your soul all sorts you know there's so many stories in it but I've had opportunities and I've hit rock bottom mm. where you have to make certain decisions, you know what I mean? And I have never gone too far of anything, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's, so it's taken much longer, much longer with real talent, with certain things like that. And I pick this side over the other side any day, you know what I mean? I mean, I've had my moments, I thought, fucking hell, man, I should have just gone and been a stripper. You know what I mean? God, if I could shake my ass so good at home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. whoa, look at that. <laughs> but am I going to go do it out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess it's all about your brand, isn't it? Because um, I, I guess, like, people like Cardi B... That's sort of part. Of, well, she started as a stripper, yeah, didn't she? And it yeah, it works, and it, it, yeah. she can put it into her art. When I watch that girl dance and certain things, and how sexy she is with her moves and stuff, that comes from that from the club. Now, even to get in the club, do you know how much that must take for somebody to do? Mm. You know what I mean? It's it's an art in itself. So to then 
use that in her music, I think is great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's her story, isn't it? It rags to riches as well. Mm. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, so I guess that's, I guess the thing with Cardi B is that's kind of like being honest, like, yeah, that's what she done, mm. but mm. then being like, oh, now she don't have to do that anymore. No, you don't have to do that. Yeah. So from one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Use what you've got to get what you want. It yeah. works for some. And some, it, yeah, it don't. Yeah, and she's obviously made a lot more for music than mm. stripping and yeah. whatever. Mm. But the, yeah, and that side of things that helped. You know, I know so many strippers and dancers and stuff like that. And they got, do they do what they do? Some people think, some people have the resilience within that field to literally go to work and dance and go home. Yeah. But then there's so many people that get caught up in the world of it as well, what comes with it. Do you know what I mean? And unfortunately, so many people get caught up in that, but there's a lot of people that are paying off their their bills and their you know uni stuff and have goals, real goals. They're doing it, using what they got to just work through and get to the other side. Yeah, yeah, I guess there's a difference between being a sex worker just because you need the money and then actually enjoying it, enjoying it. as a career. Because you know, I'm not obviously we're not saying like. You shouldn't be a sex worker. No, at all. Saying that. No, no, of course. You know what I mean? It's just more like you're saying more like you know, just the people who feel like they got no other option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate. You know what I mean? But you know, you know, some of us give it away for love. Yeah. I mean, you know, the fuck do we got to do? But again, it's just fat balance, and knowing what comes. It's a stick. What comes with. It in the long run, isn't it? When yeah. it's said and done, seriously. So anyway, now I've got the. Where are we? We are at the end of April. Yes. We've got a month. I've got four weeks left until I have the baby, which can happen at any point. He's definitely engaged and ready to pop. I've got some new music coming. Um, now it's about to drop. It's just going to go boop 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 ahead of the show. Um, and then I think I'm going to go quiet. I've got a lot of interviews, radio interviews, and just the um, a promo mm. leading up to be a screen. So I don't know how I'm going to get through it all. <clears throat> because I don't know when he's coming. It's so exciting. I'm so excited to have this baby. You don't understand. I really am. It's just a whole... I mean, it's such a different space. It's a different time in my life. I'm much older. I'm just so excited to... to um, to have him and become a mum again. Mm. I love being a mum. I absolutely love it. You've met my boys, obviously. We've done a video shoot, a picture shoot here, didn't we? Yeah. And they're funny. You can yeah, see they're definitely. two totally different types of boys as well, isn't it? I think they're both... I can see how, like, each one is, like, a part of you. My child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're the best. I just love them to pieces. And they're really good boys. They're grounded. They both work. My youngest is, what, 13? He does barbering, big barbers, big up big. Thank you so much for all of you in there. They nurture my, my boy, you know what I mean? My eldest, he is humble. He's just settled and he works at LJ's, the food store in town. You know what I mean? Him and his cousins and stuff like that. And they've just, we've only just moved to Bristol. They're not from Bristol. I'm from Bristol. Mm. So to see them adapt so well is like, is lovely. I made the right decision coming home. You know, uh, I did question it for a long time, but I'm glad to be here. And actually, and it's only been a year and a bit, and all of this has happened. Mm. If, if I didn't, none of it would have been going down. So that's another thing. Like I want to, you know, share with people and show them: don't give up because that one day makes a difference. That one day I was on my face, I really, really was, you know what I mean? I was severely depressed from bereavement, all sorts, so it really was a hard, challenging time. Obviously, it was during lockdown that my mum died mm. as well, so there was a lot, and all my family's here. I was there by myself with just the kids, you know, and um, that those one, those couple of days made all the difference with my decision, the, the, the decisions I had to make and the sacrifices, you know, and look, one year later, I'm engaged, I'm having a new child, I'm about to hit the stage big, do you know what I mean? I'm sat here with Luke, Congrats. like, it's just, get, just, just great. That's the best it's one. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just sat here with... We've made some good stuff, do you know yeah. what I mean? 
we didn't even touch on the video that we done. No. The feel good. Yeah, we should definitely talk about that. You know what I mean, that was. I think there's about twenty minutes left on the SD card. That was, and I've been on sat on that track. I made that in twenty twenty. Feel good. Feel good. Just before my mum passed, I made that, and um, I was going to release it that year, but the track clearly had more. I didn't know what to do, how to go about it or whatever. But anyway, we sat sat there on the archive of a lot of them, hmm. and then. When it came to working with you, it just felt right to go with that particular track. It was spring. We were just going into spring, wasn't we? Because we were thinking of the weather. It was winter, winter going into spring. Yeah, it was a bit cold. Mm, yeah, a bit cold. <laughs> Do you not remember? I don't oh feel the cold. God. I grew up in the cold room Listen, in the house. So uh... See, that's another thing <laughs> between <laughs> black and white people, yeah. <laughs> We're always cold. I'm hot. Uh, sorry, cold. We're always cold. You guys are always hot. Yeah. <laughs> Alice, I'm boiling. But the, yeah, so I, I started to get the vision for Feel Good bit by bit. I think I booked with you and I didn't have a clue what I was going to do at this point. Yeah, we we did talk a, like a few different ideas. Yeah. I think. I don't remember what we first said. Well, we said there was a possibility oh, of an apartment. Remember, yeah. and I was going to have like things going on in there, mm. and then I'll be the one there singing, kind of thing, isn't it? And we also talked about having like a warehouse with a spotlight. Mm. I think that was more for the first that part was for of the, the first song, part, yeah. So because it's obviously, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, but it's obviously it's basically two songs in one, right? That's correct, yeah. It's well, it's like two ballad, beats. Two beats, yeah. It's two beats in one. It's got the ballad stripped down segment a bit at the beginning. Yeah. Piano, really, you know, the words are very powerful. And then it drops into the R&B, 90s kind of feel vibe. You know yeah. I mean? Wicked track. It's one of my favourite tracks, actually, I must say. Yeah, my Nana loves it as Does well. Does she? Have got Nana? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, no, it's really, it's catchy, it's it's straight to the point it's, it's repetitive as well it's nice but yeah then a vision came in it and we liaised a good couple of times things started to go wrong actually i wasn't able to find the apartment that i was yeah. kind of had my eye on <clears throat> and stuff like that and then well the idea and then we got the boat one came up yeah and it was like on a boat that's perfect yeah. actually Let's do that. And then obviously that weekend, my partner and myself took, um, we went to go look at the boat, just to have a little look to see. And then there was a waterfall. Mm. And my partner used to go there when he was young, so he took us around there. So I was like, look at that. That's perfect. Yeah. We can use that. That would go really well with it. And then everything just started to piece together. My outfit went completely wrong because obviously bump was starting to show. Mm. So some of the other stuff I got, worked with it and it just all started to come in together my partner broke his wrist remember yeah and i was like i, I want a piano <laughs> he was like baby what a piano we're gonna get you a piano yeah <laughs> yeah and then they did didn't they and that was a there was a funny story about that as well right like <laughs> <laughs> what is left, <laughs> it was left it's in, in, in it's obviously it's quite a heavy object isn't it and you know so bring it there on on the day on the day you know. Did they didn't know they'd done it in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah. And then it ended up on Facebook one Facebook page like whose piano is this just dumped? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> one of them community them community um, yeah. places on there. And uh, but yeah, he got it with his broken hand. They travelled like about a couple of hours to go and get it for me. Hmm. Um dismantled it and had to put it together as well. Then obviously we got hold of you got it was like David. Yeah. And I was like, perfect, because the vision I had, I was thinking, yeah, some big guy is there, you know, on set or whatever. Yeah, Mixed Vibes, he, he's done a podcast as well. Has he done one? Yeah. That, oh, wicked. That should, well, that'll be all out by the time this is. Yeah? But yeah. I look forward to watching he's, that. He's, he's the funny. man in the, man in the. He's the guy in the He's in the Mr. Video. Feelgood. He's Mr. Feelgood. <laughs> and it's perfect, because I wanted to show diversity as well, so, mm. you know, he's got that model look to him. Yeah. That worked as well, do you know what I mean? And then we filmed down at the where was it again? So we started off at the that field with the what's called? 
What's that pub called there that everyone goes to? The Bird in Hand. Is that what it's called? Something like that. Yeah, so we was in the middle of nowhere where we found a spot that looked like the middle of nowhere. Perfect. And that was freezing. It was absolutely freezing. I was quite warm. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of choke doing that. I, I really enjoyed it. You make you make filming easy. You know what I mean? Oh, glad to hear. Uh, you have your vision. And if I have mine and we just bang it together. Yeah. Yeah, it went really well. It was a fun, it was a fun day as well. I, I, what was tricky was that <clears throat> I've never been on set with my partner. Okay. Anything I've kind of done has been separate. But because this is actually my partner now... You know, like in previous relationships, I get on with what I'm doing. No one can't tell me nothing, but this is my partner. He supports it, which is really nice. And to then have to, um, you know, act with with David. Yeah. All those little scenes and stuff. He, you know, first I was a bit nervous, but he, he actually left us to it as well, didn't he? He was supportive. I remember he came back in at one point and I had the dressing gown on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah. But he was joking, whereas another person would be like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> mm. uh, so yeah, it was a really good day, and and I think with both of our ideas, we smashed it. Mm, definitely. I think we actually smashed it. Really, really good shots. I couldn't get to lay on the piano like I wanted to. I've always had this vision of just laying there. I oh, want the keys or just laying on the piano. Just had this vision of just laying there, sexy with the mic like that. But what were you was on. Oh, so what were you doing instead? You were just on I'm top. I kind of it. sat. Don't you remember? I was kind of, kind of. I had to like sit like that because oh, of the okay. bump. We had to hide the bump. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I couldn't get to just Have lay you there. You still got the piano? Yeah, we still got it. Well, it's what, in. It's you, in lockup. Doing do another video. Well, I was thinking for the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think for the wedding this time. They're, it's that's coming. How they, they pull, it's coming down. It, no, it's coming down oh, okay. from the ceiling, and I'll be laid there. Mm. With the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and then your song starts. No, no. And I'll stay there. <laughs> and everyone will be waiting. And I'll still stay there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just keep the suspense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, yeah, we still got it. It's, in, it's a lockup. I'm thinking of trying to either donate, donate it to somewhere, someone who could benefit from it, or just writing it out for... Does it actually work? Clubs. Yeah. It works. Hmm. Yeah, that's no, all good. We're painting it and then moving it into our house. I'd say rent it out. Yeah, rent it. Because, um, I mean, yeah, charity's nice, but... Yeah, you know. Money. It's one of them things you can There's other make things. money in your sleep. Yeah, you know what I mean? exactly. <laughs> well, someone's got to hand them over. Mm. That's but the that's... thing about passive income. It's not always... It's not 100% passive. Exactly. Like. You've got to put in that work. Yeah. He's going to have to dismantle it every time or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not an easy job, that one. But yeah, it's in, a, in the lockup. Yeah, well, I guess because like, when we were trying to find a piano, it wasn't actually easy to you know, find one that you just rent or borrow. Like. No, it wasn't. Yeah. So that's why you had to literally just buy like, a okay. whole piano. <laughs> eBay? Yeah. Do you know we pay, only paid thirty pounds for it? Yeah, it is an old antique thing that's run and been left in their family for many years, worth how much? Mm. And the guy that's a thirty quid, <laughs> winning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thirty pounds. So yeah, feel good is out on my channel. Yeah, so that's crush landing. Landing. I'm terrible. I'm not gonna lie, I'm terrible. <clears throat> but Luke will put it. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be in the description. And where where can people find out about your music? So yeah, Crush Landing is my official YouTube page. I was thinking Crush Music for some reason. Crush Landing on oh, YouTube yeah. and there's some videos on there. Um there's loads hidden as well. I've got loads on there hidden. Again, going back to I don't know why I don't just put them out what hidden as in has in uploaded and not shown but like have they ever been shown or is it just always um, been no some of them no they've not been shown i just have them on there yeah i'm terrible i should just because it's all about putting out your shit really isn't it just leave it let it ferment or marinate just leave it i find there's a there's a difference like some people well 
early on in their career, like they just release stuff straight away and then they get a lot of negative press. And then other people, they wait until they actually get pretty good at it and then they start releasing and then it's like, oh, wow, look at this. Yeah, I think where I'm at now, a lot of the stuff that's coming out is old stuff. Mm. So I haven't even touched on the new. Yeah. But I'm trying to get rid of some of this old catalogue. And then it tells a bit of my story then, and then we can get to where I'm at now. Mm. Or I was going to do it the other way around, which is release some of the new stuff and then release like lost files tape. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But it's actually seemed to just work fine where I've got some tracks that still are very, like I said, a lot of my stuff's timed us. So some of the stuff is so old, but it, it still it runs now. It's applicable now. It can work. Yeah. So yeah, that's where, where we're sat. So there's a lot to see, a lot to hear, and a lot to feel. Yeah. <laughs> Sense. What's your um, a sensory experience? Sensory experience. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking for. I'm coming to your birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whole yeah, of Bristol should be there. I think that's such a dope idea. Sensory experience. That's the title of. That's the EP that I got, and then yeah. it's also going to be the title of the event, which I'm yet to announce. But you know. Deposits booked, so he's booked it it's after. definitely done. Yeah, it's going to be wicked. I think that's such a great idea. Like you said, you know, with autism, yeah, and everyone seeing from things from your through your lens and how you feel the visual uh, perspective. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I hope and anywhere I can. They need some <laughs> sensory <laughs> direction. <laughs> some fairy bullshit. Fairy lights in the background. Yeah, some fairy lights. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> like us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's been a pleasure. Okay. Yeah. We've touched on a few things. We really could continue talking. Yeah, literally. These cameras have only got a limited lifespan. But, uh, yeah. What are we using? Are they, are they all the same? Uh, two of them are the same. And then that one's a slightly older one. Mm. Um, yeah, budget's gone up. But yeah, it's been a pleasure, Luke, as usual. We've got work to do still. Yeah. We've got editing to get we'll edit on this. Our <laughs> <laughs> long and podcast. It's, where are we? Twelve o'clock. It's past Twelve o'clock time. on a school night. I'm gonna, on a school night, I'm going to go home. <laughs> the baby's going to wake up. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure, Crush, as always. <sighs> we like Luke. Luke's a good one. Yeah. And yeah, definitely check out Crush's music. Um, obviously, the video that, that we've done together and uh, the Instagram. How can Instagram they find you? Instagram is Crush Landing as well. Everything's Crush Landing. And if it's not, it's just Crush. But uh, social media is. I'm not really on TikTok. I should get on there, but I'm not. I'm there, but it's, there's not much up there at the moment. I guess leading up to the BS3, we'd have more. We've got more content coming. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> but as it stands. Everyone just allow me a minute because I'm, I'm in baby mode. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Please. <laughs> Definitely. You can only do so much. Exactly. I've got to take it easy. I've got to put us first. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Crush. We'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>